Ladies and gentlemen, this is obviously a very important live Global Sunday transmission. The last three quarters of the broadcast will be live, but I am taping this right now with Andrew Torba because he's got to go back into meetings with the FBI and the Justice Department. So again, this is a live Sunday show, but this is taped. I'll be live in studio in 30 minutes. Andrew Torba is the head of GAB, the only independent free speech major social network out there that's, that's got any traction. There's some other groups coming online. We're very supportive of everybody. Uh, I think Andrew Torba is a good guy. He's free speech. And you saw the terrible events uh, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania yesterday that are immediately being blamed on the First Amendment. I'm being blamed. Donald Trump's mainly being blamed. And they're trying to now totally no platform uh, gab. Dot com. So very powerful interview that I just taped with him that we're going to air on the other side of this quick break. So that the person that's actually been accused, the person that's being lied about, the person that they're saying is guilty for all this, gets to speak up for himself. Think about that. When they deplatform me and then lie and say that I'm calling for violence against the media, or when they say that Trump says all Mexicans are criminals, they never show the clip. And then they say, oh, Andrew Torba and Gab allowed this Nazi on there to plan all this and do all this. None of that's on the account. We have copies of it. It's been since taken down, and the, and the, and the FBI has it, but he didn't make any threats on there. He said four minutes before he went in, I'm going in. Going into what? Confront people? Going into... We're not even clear if the police would have known about that. They would have responded to the term, I'm going in. Maybe they would have, but... There's always been evil. There's always been murders in the world. There's always been bad things. There's suicide bombings every day in the Middle East. They don't have free speech over there. They don't have right to keep and bear arms in most countries over there. And they're much more violent, much more out of control than we are. Look at Mexico, highest crime rate in the world. 200,000 dead just the last few years uh, in, in, in uh, civilians in Mexico. No free speech, really. No Second Amendment. They've got a police state in place, and the police state makes them not safe. And so you've got national media criticizing Trump and others saying there should have been folks armed inside the synagogue. No kidding. A church, a synagogue, absolutely. As for the false conspiracy theory, that really is a ridiculous conspiracy theory, that there was a star of David on one of the vehicles, flatbacks uh, and, and, and Mexican plates driving in uh, the highway up to the U.S. from the uh, illegal uh, alien caravan. That symbol is all over sheriff's badges. It's, it's seen as good luck in Latin America. Uh, it's a multi-thousand-year-old symbol. And so this guy began to think, because this group was involved bringing refugees in, that somehow they were involved. Folks, every major church in this country, via the Rockefeller Foundation, the World Council of Churches, the National Council of Churches, has been ecumenicalized and turned into leftist. Whether it's the First Methodist in Austin or Catholic Charities, they're all involved with the UN bringing in uh, the illegal aliens and the rest of it. And it's a big problem. But it's not like a bunch of, you know, evil, sinister people rubbing their hands together. They've been manipulated as Christians and as uh, conservative Jews and others to think that it's their job to bring in all these third world populations, having their heartstrings played. Then they're turned into socialist leftist voters once they get here. So that's the reality of what happened there. It's very, very tragic. We're going to break it all down on the other side. But this is a world exclusive. And they don't want him to be able to respond and speak for himself and, and, and point out what really happened and what the FBI told him and, and what the investigation is showing and what was really said there on the site. They want to misrepresent like he's not even a person and then dehumanize everyone's free speech. It is Sunday, October 28th, 2018. I'm Alex Jones from Austin, Texas. We have a global exclusive right now. We have Andrew Torba, the CEO and founder of the only independent pro-free speech libertarian site in the world that allows social media activity, and that's Gab. Speak freely is uh, their motto. Now, we all know about the tragic events in Pittsburgh where 11 innocent people were gunned down by a psychotic anti-Semite. But now, Andrew Torba, who set up Gab so that everyone would have free speech, is being deplatformed, losing his server provider, uh, losing PayPal. Uh, they're, they're, they're trying to take him offline. And CNN is spending more time demonizing Mr. Torba and the First Amendment than they are talking about the 11 that are dead. And why? Because four minutes before this monster went in, he said to the world that he was going in. 
as if that means Mr. Torba's bad if somebody on a message board posted that. It's incredible. So he just got off the phone with the FBI. In fact, we're late doing the interview because he just got off the phone with the FBI. And I wanted you to be able to hear from him to speak for himself to the world about what Gab really stands for and what's really happening. And then we're going to look at Twitter and Facebook and others who allow major professors to organize huge Antifa groups that call for the murder of the president and the vice president who call for harassing people in the streets and for physical attacks. They're allowed to still operate officially on Twitter. Mr. Torba has done nothing like this. So We've been deplatformed. He's being deplatformed. Big media with big tech wants to silence their competition. They always say, go build your own thing. And then they come after it. So, Mr. Torba, thank you for giving us the time this Sunday. Uh, you've got the floor. Please break down what's happened. Well, thank you for having me, Alex. Uh, first, I just want to say I'm heartbroken and disgusted by this awful attack, this awful showcase of violence. I've been praying. My family's been praying. Our community has been praying for these victims and for their families and for their friends and for the community in Pittsburgh. Uh, with that said, we've also been working with the Department of Justice and with the FBI very closely. We've been fully cooperative. Uh, as soon as we discovered that this user was on our site, uh, we immediately archived all the data and proactively reached out to the FBI before they even contacted us. We didn't require them to give us a subpoena or a search warrant or anything. We proactively gave them this data so that they could work on their investigation immediately. GAB stands for individual liberty and for free expression for all people. We have hundreds of thousands of users from all around the world, from all different backgrounds, races, religions, beliefs uh, that express themselves on our site. I believe fundamentally that the answer to bad speech is always going to be more speech. In this case, the Department of Justice and the FBI now have concrete evidence for a motive uh, that they can now use in a case to seek justice against this awful monster. Uh, we have always welcomed everybody and we will continue to fight for free speech on the internet in the face of tyranny from the mainstream media smear attacks because for some reason, instead of focusing on the victims, instead of focusing on what happened, instead of focusing on uh, this monster, they're focusing on Gab as a scapegoat. Gab did not kill anybody. No social media post killed anybody. Uh, no, no, um, the only person that is responsible here is, is the individual. And I just think it's disgusting that Gab is now being attacked. Uh, I am being smeared. My face is being put up next to this guy as if I'm the terrorist. Uh, we're receiving death threats uh, and, and enough hate on the Internet ourselves. Um, we wish nothing but uh, good for the world. We welcome all people. We always have. And we are all about individual liberty and free expression. Um, we are fighting for the very things that... Uh, you know, those in the armed service fight to defend every day as well. And I think that if people can give their lives to defend these freedoms and these liberties that we cherish, I think that we'll be able to stand tall and take these attacks from the mainstream media, this onslaught and this coordinated collusion from Silicon Valley to no platform us from the Internet. Gab is not going anywhere. We are not afraid. We will not bow down to the mainstream media. We will not cower. We are going to continue to fight and the power of the people will propel us. We will continue to build whatever it takes. We are going to stay online. I don't care how long it takes. I don't care what it takes. We're going to provide a place where people can speak freely uh, under the protections of the First Amendment of the United States without the tyranny of big tech, without the tyranny of the media deciding what is real news and what isn't and who can speak and who cannot. I think that's very admirable. And uh, again, I've been through this deplatforming and no platforming process where they lie about what you've said and done, and they take your platforms away, so you can't then respond when they all gang up on you and say you're a white supremacist or Trump hates all Mexicans or saying you're a nationalist means you're a Nazi. Uh, and then that actually stirs up the real Nazis in people, and, and then the media basically then projects them onto us. But this would be like if this guy had called 911 and said, I'm going in, or if this guy had put on a message board, I'm going in, or this guy would have written on the side of a wall, you know, I'm going in, and then saying that the wall is to blame or the telephone is to blame, when you guys are basically a glorified message board where people can send messages uh, to people that have signed up to get their messages. I mean, these are digital bulletin boards where you sign up and subscribe for a text podcast basically is what i would call it you're the you're the tech guy and the idea that they're breathlessly on every channel gab 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 it needs to be shut down it needs to be shut down first they come for alex jones then they come for gab 
and then they lie about who you are, and 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 they're giving almost no coverage to these poor uh, people that were cold-bloodedly murdered. That's one issue I want you to cover. And then secondarily, we've got Louis Farrakhan with all of his followers on Twitter and everywhere else saying that Jews are bloodsuckers and Jews are termites. And he has a right to say that. I don't agree with it. I've interviewed Louis Farrakhan, but he, but, but, but he hasn't been taken off. And we're not calling for that. But I will tell you, I am calling for this uh, New York professor and others that call for the murder of Pence, the vice president, the murder of police officers, uh, the murder of all these people. And he's the guy directing people that are harassing uh, Ted Cruz and others in restaurants. And he gets promoted by Twitter. He doesn't get in trouble. That's calling for violence. Imagine if you let somebody say, let's murder people, let's kill people, like this professor, founder of a group that harassed Ted Cruz, tweeted about dead cops assaulting Mike Pence. Uh, here's his own personal Twitter showing people hung up and dead, saying this should be done to the Republicans. And it just goes on from there. So what in the world is, 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 is happening here with the controlled Silicon Valley actually promoting violence and letting it go forward and then projecting it onto you? Well, Alex, every single day we see uh, thousands of tweets calling for people to kill the president of the United States. And this is allowed. We see live streamed murders on Facebook. We see criminal activity in very high volumes across all of the mainstream social media platforms, including ISIS terror cells and pedophiles preying on children. And nobody is calling for Facebook to be shut down. Nobody is calling for Twitter to be shut down. So to take the, the disgusting... Uh, actions of one man and, and shut down an entire platform. We have 9 million people that visit our site every month. We have 800,000 users from around the world. And to take the, the, the actions of one man uh, and try to effectively remove us from the entire internet, demonize me, uh, and make me out to be some form of terrorist for allowing free expression and individual liberty online for all people, something that has always existed since the internet's uh, inception, is absurd. And I think that people need to start talking about these things, because if it could happen to us, if it can happen to Alex Jones and Infowars, don't think it can't happen to you. Don't think it, they can't scrub your identity and, and every mention and every profile you have off the Internet uh, if they don't like what you're doing. And fundamentally, I believe that having more freedom, having more speech is always the answer to bad speech. Free speech is crucial to the prevention of violence. If people cannot express themselves with words, and, and you, we push these people into the shadows, you know, then they're going to express themselves through violence, and nobody wants that. I mean, just two, three years ago, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter let the Nazis have their web pages, and they let the black supremacists and the Hispanic supremacists have their websites as well, and, and they're paid. As long as you didn't call for violence, they could be there. I didn't agree with it. A lot of them attacked me. For some reason, I'm a big target uh, of the... Uh, you know, you know, Nazis and, and, and what Hillary calls the alt-right, and she calls me alt-right, and, and that's well known. Uh, and, 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 and now they take those people off so that you can't go see that they're attacking me or attacking Donald Trump like this monster did, saying he was a globalist, the opposite of what he is, or because he's friends with Israel, he's bad. And, but instead, you get blamed, I get blamed, Trump gets blamed, uh, you know, for being Nazis when we're actually the opposite. It's just crazy. So just a few years ago, all these other platforms still allowed some free speech. Now they've gotten rid of it and they're acting like we are every form of speech that's on a message board. I mean, we have comments on Infowars and the news will say, look, somebody said something anti-Semitic here. Well, it's a, it's a comment section. Again, they are, by extension, trying to end the platforms where the debates can happen. We're going to go to break, come back with a few more minutes uh, with Mr. Torb. I don't know how much you can get into the FBI investigation. He just got off the phone with him like 20 years. You're a fucking anti-American. Oh, I'm an anti-American? Yeah. You stupid bastard. I'm a fucking patriot. I think we should classify them as a gang. You know, they come dressed in, in uniforms, they have weapons, they're almost a militia. I think we need to think about that in terms of our law enforcement approach. We condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence on many sides. On many sides. Wait, on many sides? This was a white nationalist rally. You have to call that out by name. Many sides? Mr. President, Mr. President, this is terrorism, not your order at KFC. Prior to the unrest, police banned sticks, masks, and any other, any other potential weapons. However, dozens of anti-fascist protesters broke those rules, it appears. They also pepper-sprayed the leader of the conservative group 
One left-wing demonstrator attacked a photographer, and others reportedly threatened people who were trying to film the violence. What about the alt-left that came charging at the, as you say, the alt-right? Do they have any semblance of guilt? This is what, what, let, let me ask you this. What about the fact they came charging, that they came charging with clubs in their hands, swinging clubs? Do they have any problem? I think they do. And they are just beating people, ganging up, men and women, ganging up on lone individuals and just beating them in a wanton, savage, brown shirt, Nazi operation. They don't want to mention Antifa and how Antifa literally came trained, militarized, doing warlike maneuvers. You know, they bring uh, coolers and you think, oh, it's to stay hydrated. No, it's filled with water balloons, filled with feces, urine, just disgusting things that will pop and explode on people. And water bottles filled with the same substances. <laughs> Yeah, he just got struck with pepper spray. By some irrational That's a liberal helping him. We're not all like this. No, you see, that guy attacked him is not a liberal. He's a Marxist. Every time one of these situations happens, you know, you see the worst of people sometimes. I think we saw it out of the left. You just saw those videos of them chasing and beating people, people in black clothing, black masks. Over 100 of them broke through the lines and attacked stragglers who were there. For the most part, the event was shut down. They couldn't find enough conservatives, so they started attacking the police after a while. But you saw them beating the conservatives, even as they come in carrying no hate signs. And the mayor said they made sure the themes of love and compassion dominated over hate speech. Supporters of President Donald Trump were vastly outnumbered by counter-protesters at Martin Luther King Jr.'s Civic Center Park. And then we saw that group with the masks on. They had their own, you know, shields that they made, for lack of a better term. Uh, a huge crowd there and, now. And, and while we certainly don't know, certainly, uh, and we'll try to find out, some of those protesters, the one that's, ones that showed up with the masks and the shields, uh, may do this in other locations. They may be what you call professional protesters who do this uh, a lot. That's an American flag that they have set on fire. This Trump supporter was the first casualty of the day with blood streaming out of his face. Well, they wanted to hit me with brass knuckles on the blind side. We're here for free speech. A mob chased him for a block and a half, took his flag, Trump hat, and glasses, and spat all over him. You know, I'm okay with people making white supremacists feel unwelcome. I mean, excuse me, like, you're making me feel unsafe But they were Christians. They were Christian march. Okay. Listen, everyone is saying, oh, yeah, you can't, can't listen to CNN no more. You can't listen to the news anymore because it's all fake. Bull crap. It wasn't fake before, so why is it fake now? The Russia story has kind of died down on those sites. Like, only because we're on the racism thing now. That censored nine-minute interview is coming up next hour. We're going to play it here because they're taking it off the Internet. They're blocking it. Fox News apologized for it. And when you watch it, Judicial Watch got the documents that George Soros' Open Society Foundation gets U.S. taxpayer money, millions, to then fund these operations that have UN authority. So the UN has the treaties with the countries to set up the refugee camps to bring the people in from all the world to then unvetted bring them into the United States or Europe. That's a fact. Trump pulled out of the refugee agreement with the UN last year. Now Austria, Hungary, uh, Italy are all doing the same thing because the UN runs your border. Think about that. That's global government. But who runs it is the NGOs. Those are the non-governmental organizations. And their filings are public. I've got a huge article from World Net Daily. Border caravans, call it the George Soros Express, and it links to all the Judicial Watch documents, officially from lawsuits they got, from CARE, and from the Carnegie Foundation, and from the Rockefeller Foundations, and the George Soros Open Society Foundation. It's, I mean, they've got, it's federal filings. The, 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 the leftist professors that run it, how they go and get the communists and socialists out of the countries to bring them here to be voters, they brag. It's all. So why would Fox News apologize and pull the episode? Because it's true. And George Soros will sue you. He will infiltrate you. 
he will attack you. If you talk about him being a Nazi collaborator, like Dinesh D'Souza did in his last film, which is a, he admitted, or if you expose that he's for open borders, hell, he used to be on the UN board for migration. So that censored interview is coming up next hour, because I want you to see what they don't want you to see. And then we'll get into the attacks on Trump and the violence we predicted right before the elections. Right on time. Very, very sad. Uh, but right now, let's go to some of the interview they don't want you to see because Lou Dobbs had a guest on that got the documents that the sky's blue. Here it is. Sure. Uh, look, this is a criminal involvement on the part of these leftist groups. It's a highly organized, very elaborate, sophisticated operation. I have that from the highest levels of the, of the Guatemalan government. They're investigating those groups criminally, and I strongly urge President Trump and Attorney General Sessions to do the same here. A lot of these folks also have affiliates who are getting money from the Soros-occupied State Department, and that is a very great concern. You want to start cutting money, start cutting money there. Member... Seven, eight, nine years ago before they fired Dobbs off CNN when he had on average 8 million viewers a night. Sean Hannity has 4.5 million. CNN used to have huge audiences. They killed it because they got rid of Lou Dobbs. But it, that part doesn't matter. The point is the vice president came out a week ago and yesterday and said, we have intel, it's highly organized, on and on and on. Ladies and gentlemen, we've written about it. I've made films about it. The whole plan to use migrant waves to invade and take over. But, but look at this. Fox Business pulls Lou Dobbs' episode after guest Soros remarks you just heard, saying this is criminal, and it is criminal. But it's not even a Fox pundit saying it. It's Judicial Watch. Super respected. They have the documents. Yeah, it's criminal to organize hundreds of thousands of people, including children, who are unaccompanied in some cases, and, we, and it's been confirmed, massive smugglers bringing kids through in these caravans. In fact, that's in the Associated Press. It's in the Washington Times today. Migrant caravan halts after report of abducted child. What do you think's going on with 50,000 people in one group and 10,000 in another and 5,000 in another and a bunch of others, and it's just a bunch of you know, coyotes or smugglers? But don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it because, you know, Rupert Murdoch has dinner with George Soros. We just put up with this garbage. They talk about violence. You know, the amount of 200,000 dead in Mexico in the last couple of years and all the violence down there. And there are people just marching up out of Latin America, out of the middle of nowhere, just supposed to come on in. And then, oh, you're here? We're not going to check IDs or find out why there's one man with six kids. That's, you know, a lot of cases are like that or one woman. And then what was the Washington Post headline? Remember Obama? five years ago started letting the last three years of administration anybody come through and then Washington Post headline children allowed into the U.S. by Obama given to Democrat aid groups ended up in child trafficking now this white supremacist activated sleeper cell whatever he was right on time that shows up and kills 11 innocent people he thought, oh, the Jews are bringing everybody up here. They've got the Methodist Church, the Catholic Church, the, the Baptist Churches, all under the ecumenical movement, under the World Council of Churches set up by the Rockefellers, where the UN runs it, just like they run our borders until Trump got in, to get the churches all feeling sorry for the women and children who are a minority. It's 80% military-age men. And then they just, they're giving money and helping and housing them once they get here. It's not like some nefarious conspiracy by them. They're being manipulated. I was sitting there five years ago, four years ago, my mother's church, where she's been going for decades. I'm not going to name the name of it. She doesn't go there anymore. And it was like, we're going to take an offering for the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation now because they're helping children get vaccinated. Yeah, yeah right. And, and, oh, we're going to help some migrants. And it was just like, all that's all they are now was a Methodist church. I mean, that's all that goes on now, Okay. And she went, she was, I'm not going to get into, she wouldn't talk about it. The point is, the point is, is they use all these well-meaning people incrementally until they've got you literally pushing the globalist agenda because they take over your religion. So I do not believe the people at the synagogue, you know, were hating America and thought that, no, they were like, we have to go out and do good deeds. We have to go out and bring these people in. We have to do this. But the globalists are manipulating it from behind the scenes. And so this white supremacist loon bag, if you believe the official story, you know, he's sitting here looking at all this, believing all this, and 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 then he's, oh, my God, look, it's finally we've got proof of Jews doing something. They are bringing in these illegal alien invaders, blah, blah, blah. And then he goes and does this horrible deed. 
But look at the timing. As I said last Monday, we've got the clip. Played it last week. I had some business guys here on Monday. That one of them called me today and he said, I was there in your studio watching Monday when you said they'll probably have a crazy guy in a van with a bunch of Trump stickers all over it that they'll bust. He goes, how did you know that? I just said, man, come on. It was 14 days out. Now we're nine days out. And it's going to get crazier if they're on every news channel saying there's about to be giant terror attacks and that Trump and Alex Jones and the free press are to blame. A, we'd never do that. B, we have no history of it. C, the left has been caught constantly staging things and calling for violence. And so when it magically all begins, you got to look at it a little, little out of the corner of your eye and go, man, that really is convenient. And why would you know these attacks are coming and be parroting it up there over and over again? But let's go to Pence, as I mentioned. Oh, I guess Fox News can't suspend this video. I guess they can't kick Mike Pence, the vice president, off the air because it's true. It's outside leftist groups. Soros is only part of it. If you want to go read all the documents, border caravan. Call it the George Soros Express. And it's got links to Judicial Watch, photocopies of all of it, hundreds of pages of it. Tens of millions of dollars of taxpayer money goes from the U.S. to the U.N. to George Soros and other foundations. You hear the NPR sponsors, Annenberg Foundation, uh, Ford Foundation, Carnegie, Open Society. It's the same group. Okay? But anyways, let's go to the vice president. Here it is. No, we've got a crisis at our southern border. But this caravan that was organized by leftist organizations in Honduras made its way through Guatemala. Now thousands of people trying to come up the thousand mile journey through Mexico for the, for the purpose of violating our laws and coming into this country illegally is just unacceptable. The president and I have made it clear we will not allow it. And we're going to take steps necessary to secure our border, enforce our laws. And our message to those in the caravan is return home. Uh, but but our message to the American people is this caravan is is a reminder of a crisis in illegal immigration that is driven by by laws that human traffickers actually use to entice people to make the long and dangerous long and dangerous journey, which is admitted, which is confirmed, which is unbelievably criminal. And then you say that that the UN and NGOs are forming bases all around Europe and all around the US to open up corridors to flood us and cause a stampede. And then Fox News deletes that. Next hour, we're going to get to all of it. Millie Weaver joins us. She was already in Pennsylvania, made it to the scene an hour and a half after it happened. Got incredible interviews that are up at Infowars.com and Newswars.com. Please don't forget, the next hour, I'm going to focus on news and clips and, and, and Millie Weaver, one of our great reporters, joining us. And don't forget, 8 a.m. every day, the David Knight Show. The David Knight broadcast will be covering all the real developments in live time. And the war room with Owen Schroyer and Roger Stone doing a superlative job as well, 3 p.m. Central. And we've got weeknight coverage, 8 to 10 p.m. with myself and many others of the election. And for the day before the election and the day of the election, uh, we're going to have the, you know, a few days before the election, we're going to go live to like midnight every night. We're just going to stay live from 8 a.m. to about midnight. And then on election night, we're going to go until like 4 a.m., obviously. And if the left pulls something or there's a truck bomb, God forbid, or a, like I said, a synagogue getting shot up, God forbid, or something like that, we'll, we'll be here covering it live. And I'll, we'll have reporters. I mean, incredible that Millie was like two hours away from the shooting and got there like two hours after and, and got amazing interviews. And it was a, mainly a Jewish neighborhood, and there's all these conservative, smart, super well-spoken, good-looking Jewish people. And I just say our listeners are always, they're black, white, Mexican, whatever. They're just always, patriots are just have a fire in their eyes. They're good looking people. Go to leftist events, they look, I'm sorry, I don't care what color they are, they look like hell. I mean, most conservatives look better than me, and I'm not some good looking guy. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just saying, it's like their souls been sucked out. But she's just walking along randomly, and almost everybody's a listener and a supporter. And, and you can go to a black area, you can go to a, a Catholic area, you can go to a Christian area, you can go to, you know, wherever. I was, uh, up in Omaha a few months ago with my wife visiting her family. Her family's up there. And we went to this Greek restaurant where, where, where and these people had babysitted her when she was a kid, so she grew up with their kids. And she hadn't been there in like a decade. This is a little sad story. And there's an Orthodox Greek church right next door that basically had let out. And so we were there on a Sunday and, and went over there and, and ate. And 
I got mobbed by G Greek Americans who'd been here, you know, most of them 100 years or so, with their beautiful Orthodox church, you know, down the block. And I'm at the, at the Greek place eating the great Greek food, and like half of them were listeners. And I mean, uh, again, that's the beauty of real diversity is that it brings all this flavor to America and all these different ideas and things in the melting pot. But globalism wants you all divided in your own little groups and fighting with each other, a divide and conquer. So I'm just saying, whether it's Greek, Greek Orthodox folks in Omaha or then I was talking to folks, random people from a Buddhist temple that were listeners, a bunch of them in Omaha. That was another weird thing that happened. And they were telling me how, look at that building over there. That's where the CIA's base, all this stuff. But the point was is that everybody loves freedom and they get it and they tune in here and they hear pretty reasonable stuff versus what you hear on the news that I want to kill the media. A, that would make us look bad and wouldn't be good. And they're not the media. They're anti-American saboteurs. And B, I'd get put in prison. And that's the thing. I don't want to censor Louis Farrakhan. And they do cherry pick things he said. And he's a, he's a big leader. And if we can get him on the side of fighting the globalists, it'd be a great thing. So I went and talked to him to try to stop a race war. And he agreed. And he's come out to be a Trump supporter. So Farrakhan is, is kind of in flux. And, and, and I, I'd like to see him like Darth Vader, you know, come over completely the liberty movement before he kicks the bucket uh he definitely got more energy than i do it however old he is my god uh the point is is that i just would rather get him to see they put him in that pigeonhole the point is i don't say take him off twitter he said some things i hate things i disagree with the point is to use leftist propaganda to create divide and conquer but when i went to that trump rally first one i'd gone to because i don't want to cause a scene and boy it caused a scene in houston twenty thousand inside 100,000 tickets that went out, probably 50,000 outside conservatively. Most folks came and went after an hour. Couldn't even find parking for miles around it. And we show up there, and I got hours of just mobbed. I couldn't, to go 100 feet would be like 30 minutes, unless I was just rude to people. And it was dizzy. And the amount of, I mean, I've been to leftist events. I cover them. You go to leftist events, it's all white people that look like they're on meth. And some Hispanics. And then usually a really a few really sad looking old black ladies that look like bag ladies who I feel sorry for who are just desperate for the Social Security check and are just scared. And then you go to a Trump event and man, it's like the best looking black people, the best looking white people, the best looking Asians, the best looking Hispanics. And by best looking, I mean, they're just alive. They might be overweight. They might be skinny. But they just look alive. And I was, my hand was sore. I was being hugged by everybody. And the footage is up on Infowars.com. It was viral on Twitter. They banned it because they don't want that image of unity. But Owen Schroyer and others were just in D.C. for the big walkaway thing this, this, this weekend. Mobbed by high school kids. Mobbed by white people, black people, Hispanics. Mobbed by everybody. Now, there was a group of black folks brainwashed that ran up and started getting in his face and attacking him. And that footage is up on Infowars.com. It's very, very sad. And these people look like they're idiots. I mean, you, you contrast those black folks versus the video of black folks at Trump rally. He's talking to me. And they're all more articulate than I am, better dressed than I am, got their act together. And then you look at these leftist victims, and they literally act like morons. And that's what I'm telling you is the globalists want to dumb down education, make people dependent because they want this type of climate. Now, we have the banned Lou Dobbs piece from Fox News that re-aired Saturday, and they were all apologizing and everything. It's, it's pure truth uh, from Judicial Watch that sued and got the documents proving Soros is in part, depending on which caravan you look at, he funds about 30% of it with your taxpayer money. The big thing is Soros gets taxpayer money. It's not that he's a criminal. That, that's a side issue. What they're really scared of is for U.S. aid to the U.N., he gets your money, and he directs it. That way they can, if the U.N. commits crimes through Soros, they don't get in trouble. So they fence it through Soros, so that's coming up. But, and, and I bring this up about leftists acting like zombies and being almost all white because they are. And it's important to like go, you, you know, it's like when you see somebody, I don't watch a lot of TV, but we watch sometimes the live cop shows that they have on Friday and Saturday night, you know, when I'm laying there in bed with my wife. And, and sometimes one of my daughters is in there, you know, eating ice cream or whatever. And we're, we're just, just like, I think this happened a couple nights ago. The point is, was it this week? No, it was last week. And they have, like, these live cop shows. And I go, oh, those are meth heads. 
They can be black. They can be white. They got the meth mouth. They got the they're acting all. I go. The cops are going to find meth in their uh, in in their purse, and it, every time meth is found in the purse, I mean, it's like you look at a leftist and they look like meth heads, or something. Something's wrong with them. I don't care if they're white. I don't care if they're black. I don't care who they are. There's something wrong with them. There's even studies that conservatives look better all over the world. It could be in Brazil. It could be in Africa. It could be, you know, any continent, a country. Conservatives look better. They're not really conservatives. That, the media means what is successful looks better. And it's not just that you look good and that your looks are classical. It's that you have an innate strength in you that's pro-human. I mean, how many videos have we seen the left beating up people at pro-life demonstrations, men beating up women, and the media praises it? But, but I'm digressing. Let's go ahead and get to them blaming Trump for everything. Here is Schiff, the corrupt member of Congress, the Democrat deputy head of the Judiciary Committee, saying that Trump is guilty for the climate of, of, of what's his quote here? Trump is guilty. He set the tone of hatred and incitement of violence. I mean, I've got to think of where conservatives call for violence and count it up on one hand. Okay. This latest white supremacist was a national socialist that hated Trump and because he likes Israel and and, and, and hates, you know, just, 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 so that doesn't, see, hated Trump. So they're having to just blame the media and alternative media and try to ban that because they need a scapegoat. But but the left itself, all the violence, the shootings, Khalees, tagging Rand Paul, on and on and on. And then all the talk of killing Trump and, and, and raping Barron and raping Melania and raping blah, blah, blah. All the stuff we hear. And then they say Trump is responsible for standing up to him is what he's responsible for. Here it is. Um, the broader issue is what kind of crime, uh, climate are we creating in the country? Uh, this country is filled with amazing, beautiful, wonderful people who came here, many of them um, attracted by the idea this was a land of opportunity, no matter your again. religion, your ethnic. MS-13 are God's children. You, you mean that? Like unvetted kids being child trafficked, Washington Post? that Obama brought in, loaded on, God knows whose charity, disappearing forever. And so Trump has added to this, the UN wants to overrun the borders, not let us have any borders. Trump says we're, un we're not under the UN anymore. And so you go on there and say he's responsible for the climate that you know you've been pushing continually. Continue. Gorge and your color. That idea is being tested uh, by those who are preaching hatred and division. Um, and we have to overcome that. It's the Democrats uh, that preach And I think the president has a pivotal role there. No one sets the tone more than the president of the United States. Uh, and the tone that he sets is one of division, often one of hatred, uh, sometimes one of incitement of violence against journalists. Uh, and there's no escaping our collective responsibility, but there's no escaping the tone that he sets uh, for the country. Oh, that's the enough. Con yeah, the, con the, the tone that there should be a country, what you call white supremacist. He says we deserve a country and shouldn't be run by China or the UN or the EU bureaucrats, which we were under. He killed the TPP, all of it. I mean, that is, as the president says, fake news. Fake news, big time. Okay, let's go to the next clip here. This is... Uh, Dana Bash on bomb suspect Trump responsible for shocking CNN suck chance. No, CNN, your ratings suck. You're known liars. You stir up war. You stir up division. You stir up anti-free speech crap. You suck because you suck. When you drive into a town, you don't know the town. This restaurant's full of cars. That restaurant has nobody at it. The one with no cars at it's got flies in the hamburgers. The one with the line around the block is delicious. No one watches you because you suck. Here is Dana Bash. Facts. Hey, can I just say, because we're putting this, uh, this, this picture up, the image of what was on that van um, and for an extension, extended period of time. That image, CNN sucks. Of course the president didn't direct this. He's not technically responsible for this. But he is responsible for not just allowing the chance CNN sucks at his rallies, but stoking it. Making clear that he likes it. And yeah, so uh, that's enough. Get her off. So CNN says Trump is literally Hitler and that he wants to destroy the country and kill all the minorities. He wants to murder the gay people. None of it's true. And so people are sick of being lied to. And so it's Trump's fault.
Got another clip. CNN's Brian Stelter calls Gab alt-right website a Hillary Clinton invention. Un no, it's a social media site that has free speech like the rest of the Internet had just two years ago. Remember that. We're going to go to break. Come back. Don't forget hearing the truth about the North American Union, about globalism, about the TPP, about all of this, which, which now Trump's got into office and Trump is killing. Foreign multinational corporations setting up systems around our country. So I'm going to play a little clip of the final show that got him banned off CNN for being number one. Kind of like we're being banned off the Internet for being number one. Well, they're trying to shut Drudge down for being the number one website. Number two website in the world, number one a news site. And then I'm going to play the, the three minutes and 15 seconds of the banned part from Lou Dobbs' show this Thursday that re-aired Saturday on Fox that they're making such a big deal out of. Fox condemns rhetoric used by Lou Dobbs' guest as channel star host faces growing criticism. Yes, as his ratings go up, just like Sean Hannity or just like Tucker Carlson, he needs to be taken off. Well, you can't. And then you read the specifics. It's all in an article, Border Caravan. Call it the George Soros Express from World Net Daily. There's a bunch of other articles, but this is what Judicial Watch is talking about. Judicial Watch is talking about the documents they sued last year and this year to get, where in Europe and here it is leftist groups that get U.S. taxpayer money through the U.N., we give the U.N. money through U.S. aid and other groups, and then it's given to the NGOs that run it. And Soros doesn't pay for this himself. He gets your tax money to build the refugee centers, to advertise it, to bring them in. And then they manage them once they get here with the aid groups, and they house them in churches and synagogues and Catholic charities, and then the lo local leftists get up to half the money and the welfare that each person brings in. This is a cash cow bonanza, and they don't want that discussed. But it's all true. I've already been covering this for years, but you need to go read about the George Soros Open Society Foundation, CARE, uh, the Annenberg Foundation, the Rockefeller Foundation, the Carnegie Foundation, the MacArthur Foundation, all the groups you hear advertising on NPR. And it's links in the World Daily article. We've written about these as well, but this is the best article that just boils it all down. And it's got the, 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 the bios of the professors at Berkeley and UT and Harvard that run the migrant studies and how they're going to say there's no borders, no wall, no USA at all, no borders, no wall, no USA at all. It's all here, but they think you're idiots. They think you won't go look this up that we're paying for this, for leftists, not regular folks from Honduras or uh, San Salvador or, or, or Venezuela, but the very ones waving their Honduran and Venezuelan flags saying they hate America. And, and Trump's Hitler and Trump's the Antichrist and burning American flags and smuggling children. That's in the news today. Mexico stopped the caravan. They're smuggled kids in there. So it's the truth that can't be spoken. See, they say, oh, Jones is saying kill the media. Where's the clip? Not saying that. Joe Jones is showing you Judicial Watch documents. And see, they can't have Lou Dobbs do that either. Why, he's too respected. Why, he was number one in cable. Even against Fox, he had twice the viewers they did. We can't allow that. See, CNN could have conservatives on, and they'd be number one, but they won't do it. Because they are there to suppress the people. So let's go to the section of the censored Lou Dobbs Judicial Watch interview with Chris Farrell, Director of Judicial Watch. Here it is. Caravan, just north of the Honduran border. Joining us tonight, Chris Farrell, Director of Investigations for Judicial Watch. Chris, good to have you with us. I know that uh, uh, this uh, caravan was a subject of considerable interest for you, for Judicial Watch, uh, and certainly for the American people. Give us your uh, first, uh, and I'm going to, because we have limited time, ask you to be as succinct as possible. Uh, your thoughts on what you witnessed and what you saw and heard. It's an overwhelmingly male caravan of mid-teens to mid-40s. Uh, I'd say the women and children are a super minority. There are certainly criminal elements rolled into the caravan. Uh, there were children that were recovered from a human smuggling operation today. Uh, the Guatemalans are trying to hold them back and turn them back, but it's a very grave situation. 
Leftist groups uh, reported to be uh, the organizers playing instrumental roles and financial Absolutely. roles. Uh, tell us what you can. Sure. Uh, look, this is a criminal involvement on the part of these leftist groups. It's a highly organized, very elaborate, sophisticated operation. I have that from the highest levels of the, of the Guatemalan government. They're investigating those groups criminally, and I strongly urge President Trump and Attorney General Sessions to do the same here. A lot of these folks also have affiliates who are getting money from the Soros-occupied State Department, and that is a very great concern. You want to start cutting money, start cutting money there. Do you know anything about what we're seeing in those reports and pictures of USAID uh, uh, packages, bags uh, containing what we know not, but obviously distributed by USAID? Uh, what, is, what is behind that? I don't have a clear answer off the top of my head. I can just tell you that there's all sorts of programs that these groups are affiliated with that we spend taxpayer money on. It needs to be cut off now. And uh, where are we headed? Uh, we have another caravan uh, of a thousand or more people uh, forming up in Honduras, ready to make the same trek uh, through Guatemala to uh, into Mexico to our with a plan of getting to our southern border. Uh, your thoughts about this and uh, what we can expect? It's really an inter intermittent river of humanity. It's not a caravan in the sense of a discrete group. Uh, and I also look. I don't have firm evidence yet, but my, my intelligence, my indicators are look for something coming out of El Salvador in the next week. And uh, the president has ordered at least 800 troops, uh, logistic, uh, uh, primarily in uh, mission uh, to the southern border. What's it going to take to take the, what appears to be now uh, 14,000 uh, migrants in this caravan Way better being than that. Uh, shuttled by the Mexican government right into our border? If they get to the border and they make an asylum claim, remember, 98% get through. Something fundamental has got to change here. And then that triggers the next right. wave. Chris Farrell, good to have you back. Thanks. Thanks, Lou. Okay, you so vote in our poll tonight. everything he said is true. It's on record. They're making all these arrests and child smuggling right now. Show the Washington Post article about Obama when he opened the border up. These caravans were full of kids that were then smuggled and trafficked into prostitution. That's the Washington Post. There it is. So... That's why they're so scared. That's why they're so upset is that the common sense of what is happening is waking people up so they can't have discussions of how this is criminal. They can't have discussions about how this is illegal. There it is. Obama administration placed children with human traffickers. Water in just a second. But first, I want to add an addendum on what I was just covering last segment. You think about, you think about Lou Dobbs who's been number one on television, a great journalist, an impeccable research, Judicial Watch, credible research, the documents, that George Soros and the Ford Foundation and the UN and U.S. taxpayer money through USAID is funding the illegal alien invasion. And there's child smuggling going on, and the Washington Post admits it, and, 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 and Vice President Pence says they have that intel, and then they have a huge Twitter war and a bunch of harassment of Fox News and their sponsors until Fox apologizes and condemns the segment and pulled it from their servers. Fox condemns rhetoric used by Lou Dobbs' guest as Channel's star host faces growing criticism, CNN. That's their job is killing truth, killing other media. They have no viewers. All they do is organize Democrats to engage in fraud. We're going to release footage very soon of undercover CNN stalking us. We ran their plates. We have it all. I'm really going to have to take action against them politically and economically and through the criminal justice system because they are a terrorist organization, ladies and gentlemen, working against this country. They are the enemy of the people, period. So that's the truth, ladies and gentlemen. And it's just wild to see how these bullies work, and America must stand up against them. Now, I want to Millie Weaver, but I wanted to show these short clips Shot this morning before he took off to fly back to Austin just hours ago. Our own Owen Schroyer covering the walkaway, hashtag walkaway movement that's, that's so successful with Democrats saying no, the Democratic Party and the big red wave they're trying to suppress right now. Er, but early voting shows huge Republican turnout everywhere but Florida. And a lot of Senate races are neck and neck while they're, at, they're sampling 15 points more Democrats. So I, I wouldn't say that's the case. But barring massive total fraud, we're going to see hold on to the House and the Senate. Tomorrow's news today. 
let's 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 go to the article on infowars.com that you should share with folks. Infowars reporter accosted in DC reporting on Kanye Black Exit clothing line. Instead of Brigsit, Blixit. Candace Owens, what an amazing lady. She came up with that. NPCs triggered by Owen Shore pointing out rapper encourages hashtag walk away and free thinking from fashion culture. So he's a matrix breaker, the great Kanye West at every level. He calls me the matrix breaker. He's a matrix breaker. And and let's go to that clip and then to Millie Weaver. Here it is uh, today where some folks are still on the plantation. As Kanye West and Candace Owens are literally leading a brand new cultural revolution for African Americans in America right now, getting themselves off the Democrat plantation. You think I'm crazy, ma'am? Why do you think I'm crazy? Oh, hit pause. Back to stuff. I should have added. He's at the Smithsonian talking in a regular voice. If you're a radio listener, aimed at a sign outside and people get pissed at him. Go ahead. I mean, this is crazy. Continue. They hear Kanye West and they get mad. Here it is. Off the Democrat plantation. You think I'm crazy, ma'am? Why do you think I'm crazy? I love that they're showing the hate. Here's the hate. Now he's coming up to me. Look at this. Oh, my gosh. What is your deal, dude? Move away from me now. Dude, you move away from you me. You literally came up to me. Here we go. She just knocked my hat off. Thanks, guys. No, no. Thank you guys for showing the hate. Thank you guys so much for showing the hate out here. Thank you for showing the world how hateful you are. Notice how the left are. They Thank always you attack to and me. they say you. Isn't it perfect? It's fine. No, it's fine. Thank you guys for showing the world how hateful you are. You guys are still on. The, you guys are still in the cult, but you guys can get out of the cult. This is how cult people behave. So they choose not to be part of the African American. And our audio is not right cutting now. out. We're we're cutting no, the, the cuss words. No, I understand. You don't want to be on film showing the world how hateful you are, but you're too late. You already did. You already did. Yeah, they're in public. Suck butt, she says. They came over wow. and attacked That's him. It's always fun, folks. It's always fun to put your Superman cape on and let the left show their hate. All right, I'm going to Millie Weaver, but I want to play time. one more clip. This is Owen in the same area, and a bunch of college students, or the high school students, the articles on Infowars.com, they're fans. It's, it's college students, and the professor comes over and goes, God, don't talk, but they know who Owen is. Owen's got hundreds of millions of views like Millie online till they deleted them all, and probably billions, actually. Some of Owen's videos have like 50 million views apiece. And, and so, oh, we love Owen. Oh, no, the, the controller comes over to say, you don't talk to him. That's a cult, folks. Here it is. The people that uh, don't like Trump and don't like Infowars, they're mean, they're hateful, they call you names, they flick you off. Some of them even get aggressive and, and physically violent. Oh, but then you, you run into people that, you know, like us and, and like Trump. Uh, what are they? They're nice. They're loving people. They have a conversation. So it's really just incredible the dichotomy that can be exhibited in real time just by wearing this hat. And that's part of the Superman cape analogy is that it gives you the power when you put on this hat to go into the matrix. It's almost like putting on the glasses in They Live, right? You put on the glasses and then you can see things for what they really are and not how they're being presented. So that's amazing. So what if we got love? You guys, are you guys lovers? Look at that. Are you yeah, Owen? Yes, sir. Owen. Where are you Where's guys Alex from? Jones. L.A. Where is you guys are from L.A.? Right, yeah. Are you guys out here on a vacation? No, we're in <laughs> So what? So they shouldn't be on camera without parents' permission. We're alone. I'm no, 17. Come on, guys. Come on. I'm so out. I guess this guy, this guy must not be a fan. All right, hey, you guys have a blessed day. You too, Owen. Say, hey, hey, thank you, man. Thank so you. those are guys. college guys. students. Amen, brother. Amen. You, you can see their college at uh, uh, high school, but the, oh, you're not going to be on camera unless he says so. Okay. So, okay. Uh, all right, all right, well, well, that's good. Full, full video up on Infowars.com. Millie Weaver, a lot going on. We'll have another segment to get more into things, but you were there. You were literally just feet away from where these poor people got murdered, having a baby naming ceremony, and just all of this is going crazy. Millie Weaver, reporter for Infowars.com, uh, doing a great job. I, I keep saying great job. He's doing such an amazing job. Uh, what in the world do you think is going on with nine days out from the election? Well, I don't know if this necessarily has to do anything with the election, but I know that the Democrats are going to try to use it all they can for their own political ad agenda to try to demonize Trump supporters and conservatives when they won't report the fact that this gunman who went down there and gunned down these innocent Jewish people in this synagogue hated Trump. He didn't like Trump. He called Trump a globalist. 
Uh, apparently, Trump was too uh, pro-Jewish for an actual anti-Semite. And that's what the left doesn't want to acknowledge right there. Um, when we found out from, about the Boston bomber that that had a Trump supporter as the suspect who was going to be arrested in that, they went all day on their platforms and shouted from the rooftops that a Trump supporter was responsible for this, but they won't say that this person was a Trump hater that did this synagogue shooting. That's something you won't hear from the mainstream media. And it gets crazier because the guy's saying Trump's a globalist, Trump's pro-Israel, he's controlled by the Jews and all this. So they kind of halfway blame Trump and then dropped it. Now they're blaming free speech and gab.com who again lets a lot of folks on it people say oh well whatever let them get rid of that website no they're gonna go after everybody's website well yeah i mean they're gonna go after free speech as a whole and this kind of um if you remember back when i was talking about possible false flags now i'm not saying this is a false flag but i was saying that there was a possibility of things happening that could be used to justify further censorship on social media and a social media id um, this could be used to try to push for that. Oh, I think everything's situation. suspicious. The, the, the pipe bombs we predicted and that old thing doesn't add up. All of this should be investigated. We'll come back, Millie Weaver. We're eight and a half days out for TV viewers and radio listeners. Uh, it is the world exclusive, the head of gab.com, uh, who did not call for violence, who has a libertarian site, liberal conservative. Everybody can be on it. And... They're blaming him because this guy had an account. He had an Instagram, he had a Facebook, he had a Twitter, he had all of that. And he, he didn't say, I'm going to kill anybody on Gab. And, but even conservatives are saying, they don't have a right to exist now, get rid of them. Gab did not kill anybody. No social media post ever killed anybody. World exclusive, Gab found a response to synagogue massacre and lashes out at lying MSM. None of them even called him for a quote or even have them on. They just lie about him to set the president to shut it down, but you can stop them. Everything we do here is free to air. For radio host, TV host, I always get emails like from radio hosts. Can I play a clip of your show? It's fair use, play it all. But yes, you have my explicit total license, use it all. I, we're all free to air, that means air it. Infowars.com, newswars.com, prisonplanet.com. Get the articles, get them out, get the videos out. They're trying to ban Gab now, not just Infowars. What's next? Lou Dobbs, Sean Hannity, Donald Trump. They want Donald Trump off Twitter. We have to stop letting these people, it's like a lion, and the lion tamer has a little whip, but he has that lion intimidated, and I'm sick of it. Stop acting like they're God. Millie Weaver, I appreciate you joining us today. Um, so, so just getting into your observations, eight days out now, eight and a half days out, what you saw in Pittsburgh, you know, talking to the locals, what you think's coming next, because you're a smart cookie. Well, you know, Alex, I just want to say something on the situation where the media is trying to blame Gab somehow because this person used their social media network. Um, it's just not logical. The left likes to have double standards. Most of the shooters and bombers of past terror events all had various social media accounts on Twitter and Facebook and so on and so forth. And yet these social media accounts or social media platforms weren't blamed. So now they're trying to use this to justify blaming Gab AI and holding them responsible for something that they actually aren't under the Section 230 Communications Decency Act, which these social media platforms that are open, neutral public forums have um, protections in, so they aren't liable for something somebody necessarily says. Now, it's a different story if they were actually plotting it on social media, but there's no indication that this individual was plotting it rather than they were just using the platform to say um, free speech, which theirs in this case was very anti-Semitic and very bigoted. Now, I want to point this out. Many of the people that we talked to uh, that were standing around that were residents of this neighborhood for the Tree of Life synagogue that recently was shot up with a mass shooting in P Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, um, these people said that, hey, you know, if there had been armed security there, we could have minimized the casualties. There could have been less loss of life. And that was one of the interesting things that sparked up following this is that you had many members of this Jewish community talking about whether or not they should have had guns 
to protect themselves, given that there are a lot of anti-Semitic, hateful people out there that would target the Jewish community. We know that Hitler, who was the biggest Jew hater of all, knew how important it was to disarm people that you wanted to kill. Uh, we know that Hitler took the guns prior to shipping off all of these innocent Jewish people to concentration camps and then exterminating them. So of any people, of any group of people, the Jewish people have been persecuted very much so. So they saw the importance of having that right to protect themselves. And that was what kind of instantly sparked up in the neighborhood. Now, of course, you're going to have your liberals there, you know, that, that believe that more gun control is the answer. But a large amount of the community there was Orthodox Jewish people that are more conservative leaning, like, for example, like how Ben Shapiro is. Um, a lot of them share more conservative viewpoints. And we had some in interesting interviews with them. And hopefully we could get around to playing some of those clips, Alex. Well, we're out of time basically now, but we're going to have those tomorrow during the weekday show. They're all posted to Infowars.com, to Newswars.com. And the only way any of this key stuff gets seen is if listeners, again, get excited, have that chain reaction, tell folks about the local stations they're listening or watching, or spread the word about Infowars.com or Newswars.com and get these articles out because it is amazing. And what you're covering and what you're exposing, Millie, uh, is 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 not in the mainstream. It's either right wing or left wing. It's not just America wanting common sense. But listen, we predicted the shootings at liberal facilities. We predicted the bombings. The, the left kept saying it's coming, it's coming before the election with no proof. Now it's happening. I don't know exactly what's going on, but it's very, very suspicious, the whole thing. And I really am cringing, Millie, in the next eight days uh, before the election of what they're going to pull. Oh, yeah. I mean, who knows what's next? We know that during October surprise season, anything's possible. Uh, one thing I will say that's very interesting that did actually creep up into uh, on a mainstream media site on Facebook, CBS was streaming, and there was an interview with one of the CBS reporters who was there. She interviewed the former president of the Tree of Life Synagogue. And he was talking about how they were actually anticipating an event like this and that they were working with the city of Pittsburgh's emergency management planning people and talking about how they could better mitigate a shooter type no, situation. No, I saw that a month ago. They had Homeland Security there. And I'm on, uh, look, the poor liberals. They, I mean, I really feel sorry for them. Carry, concealed carry, have guns. You've got a synagogue or you're what? I mean, you better have guns. In Israel, the synagogues have guns. You're a target. Protect, you can't call 911 and wait five minutes. God, the cops got there fast, and, 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 and they engaged in like five minutes, but people were dead by then. So just protect yourselves. Good Lord. And there are some synagogues in the area, according to some of the residents, that do actually arm themselves. I saw that. Guns. In fact, most of them do. Notice this guy didn't target that. Very suspicious. We should look into this guy because I'm worried about li liberals doing false flags. They figure out the way to get us now is to create an M.O. about themselves online and then do something. They hate Trump and America so much that they would go stage something, not the synagogue, not the, the Jewish folks, but but, the, but this guy. This, this whole thing is so suspicious. Millie Weaver, we'll be tracking it all. I know you're going to be on the campaign trail the next eight days and then the aftermath in D.C., uh, Infowars.com, tomorrow's news today. Thank you so much, Millie Weaver. Thanks, Alex. Wow, Millie, again, just knocks out of the park every time. Okay.